Thank you for joining me today. My name is Pastor Caroline Barclay here in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia with Master's Hand Ministry. Today is Sunday, April 24th, and in Pictou County, we woke up to snow this morning. But I am happy to say that it's all melted now, so it just seeped into the ground and became fertilizer. So that's a good thing. Today, the title of my message is, Where is God in the Suffering? And I want to look at Romans chapter 8, verse 18, and I will be doing all scripture from the Good News Bible. So I would like, if you have your Bible handy, that you would open your Bible to Romans chapter 8, verse 18, and we will read that scripture together. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, here we are one week after Resurrection Sunday, and we are forever grateful for the cross. Jesus gave up his life so that we may be forgiven our sins, past, present, and future. What an incredible, glorious thought, almost more than we can ever totally understand. He brought glory to you, Lord, over 2,000 years ago when he carried redemption and salvation to all mankind, just as he carried the cross through the Via Della Rosa, the way of sorrow. How can we say thank you? We can accept Jesus in our hearts and live as he wants us to live, holy and acceptable unto you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, today's message, Where is God in the Suffering?, came from having a conversation with a few friends, and one person asked, Where is God in the suffering in the world? The war in Ukraine and Russia, with thousands who have lost their lives needlessly. Where is God? I immediately felt the pain in that question. And my heart came to the scripture that we opened with today. As these words flooded through my mind, I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. As I thought of those words, I thought of Paul in his writings. And we can see here Paul's faith in what he wrote. There was much suffering during the time that he lived, similar, similarly to today, but we can hear his words of faith, loud and clear. They showed a tremendous amount of confidence in the Lord, in the very one he was serving. We will always have suffering, Paul wants us to know, but that does not mean that God is not with us. Just imagine, where would we be if God were not with us? and that we could not call on him for all that he gives us. Help, hope, peace, guidance, assurance, and so much more. When we suffer, and we will, we must stay close to God, believing that he will see us through. Non-believers can see the steadiness that God gives us and wonder at how we handle our suffering. Well, when we suffer well and go through the suffering, keeping the Lord as our constant, we bring glory to God. People see God in our lives, which brings a testimony of God's glory to them. Hopefully, they will want to know God in the way we do. 
In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we read, We know that in all things God works good for those with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose. When God calls us according to his purpose, it means we will give up the comforts and the successes, if and when necessary, in life to do his will. Just as Jesus left the azure halls of heaven to fulfill God's plan of redemption, we too may be called to give up our luxuries and securities to see his will done. God's plan for redemption certainly seems harsh when we think of Jesus' suffering. And yet today, we can see, as said above in Romans, that as Christians, all things God works for good with those who love him. Jesus loves the Father and people, even though we are sinners. And he chose to leave the glory of heaven, to become flesh, and to bear a painful death on that old rugged cross on our behalf. Where was God in this? God was in the flesh. He did what had to be done for the good of all mankind and to bring them to his heart. Amazing, isn't it? The suffering at that time will one day be revealed to us because God chose to love us through every circumstance of life, beginning to end. In Jesus' time on earth, he faced hardships aplenty, challenges we cannot even imagine. He suffered beyond our comprehension. And yet, he knew the Father's love, and he depended on him to see him through. He stayed strong, even in times of rejection, hurt, and pain, by praying and talking to his Father. He knew the power of his Father, and he trusted in that power alone. Now, back to the question, where is God? God is in the promises of his word to us in the Bible. God is in the renewed strength that we receive every day. God is beside us, listening to and answering our prayers. There is no place on earth or in heaven where God is not. And this is why we say he is omnipresent meaning that he is everywhere. He is our refuge and strength, our mighty tower. He is omnipotent, powerful, and omniscient, knows everything. God sees what is happening in the world today, just as he has from the beginning of time and his heart breaks at the suffering that mankind brings upon itself. He longs for a world that is holy and acceptable unto him. However, mankind, to a great extent, from the beginning of time until the end of time, will continue on a course of destruction because it does not have God in its heart. Psalm 14 verse 1 reads, 
fools say to themselves, there is no God. When mankind creates evil, devastation, and destruction, it does so because it does not follow in God's ways. This is indeed a foolish endeavor. If God and his word was in people's hearts, then the mind, body, and soul would live as righteous unto the Lord. Man cannot truly love until God is in their heart. God is love. And when we accept him into our lives, love leads us to do good, not evil. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 39, Christ was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answered, love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So, you see, if we love the Lord, our neighbors, and ourselves, a lot of the pain and suffering caused at the hand of evil men would undoubtedly be set aside. Where is God? Is he in your heart? Do you know him? Have you accepted his son Jesus as Lord and Savior? Christ gave his life for you and for me at the cost of suffering and dying on that old rugged cross. Where is God in the suffering? Perhaps the question should not be, where is God? But rather, why does man continue to commit such atrocities? God assures us that he is near and nothing, nothing shall separate us from his love. How do I say that with such confidence? Well, because it's in the Bible, in Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Let me read this to you. Who, then, can separate us from the love of Christ. Can trouble do it? Or hardship, or persecution, or hunger, or poverty, or danger, or death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we have complete victory through him who loved us. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Jesus our Lord. God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. We have and serve a mighty God who loves us and will be with us from now to eternity. Where is God? 
He is with us continuously, for his word declares, I will never leave you nor forsake you, as we read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Where is God? He is right beside us, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. His word promises that. Paul the Apostle assures us that we will have struggles in life. But God has not left us. Rather, he is with us, working through the struggles. He's for us in the good times, and surely he is with us in the hard times. Whatever life brings, we cannot compare the suffering at this present time with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. Thank you, Lord, for that precious word today. And may our hearts continue to be assured of your great love and power. Let us all continue to pray for the Ukrainian people and the Russians who have all been suffering. Let us pray that God is beside them through these devastating times. I pray for those who have lost their lives and may their loved ones that are left here continue to live their lives in God's promised word, looking forward to the day that the Lord brings them to himself in glory. I pray people will call out to God, who is everywhere, all-powerful, and knows all things. I hope they reach out to God, who loves us beyond our comprehension. To our Father, who loved us so much that he sent his one and only Son to suffer and die for our redemption. He saved us from our sins and granted us salvation, delivering us from the consequences of our offenses through Jesus. Where is God? I pray that the omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient Father is in your heart and delivers you every day from evil. Thank you, Lord, for your message today. Where is God? He is right beside you. Let's pray today in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you listening today who perhaps do not have Jesus as Lord and Savior, then perhaps this message might not be clear to you. So I would ask you today that you would accept Jesus into your heart and that you would uh, know him as Lord and Savior, that you would begin to learn and understand his word, and that you would begin to walk in his ways, and to look up and to know where your help comes from. So if you would like to know Jesus as a personal friend, then I ask that you bow your head with me and say this prayer with me today. Heavenly Father, 
I thank you for your son Jesus. And I understand that he came to earth to live as a man and that he took our sin upon his shoulders to the old rugged cross. That he gave up his life and that he purchased redemption for me and for all mankind. I thank you, Lord, for this gift of salvation. And today, I ask that Jesus would come into my heart and that he would change who I am and that I could begin my new life in Jesus, looking to you, Father, and understanding your ways. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I pray that if you prayed that prayer today that you will reach out and touch base with us here at Master's Hand Ministry. Or if you live a distance uh, anywhere where you're listening to me, that you would reach out and find a church that preaches the crucified Christ. Perhaps you have a neighbor who lives next door and you know that they faithfully go to church and have a belief in God. Ask them to begin your walk with you. They will be delighted to do so. And they will be delighted to know that you have become a brother or sister in Christ and that you now are part of the family of God. I'd like to ask you to please stay tuned to the website this week. Um, tomorrow, Monday, Spencer will have something to think about. And Tuesday, he's back in the Bible study at, in Romans chapter 1. And he's starting at verse 18. So just come alongside there and pay attention to where he's going in that study. On Wednesday, I will have a writing that's put up on the website. And Thursday, we will have Peter's Picks. And they're always a delight. There are seven of them, one for every day, or you can read all seven, seven days of the week. Friday, Pastor Todd sends us a message, and we always enjoy getting that. So I thank each one who um, takes their time and supplies for our ministry on the website so that many people can be in touch with God uh, seven days a week. I'll be back next Sunday with a message as well. Now, a little bit of news. For those of you who've been asking, we are now set up with e-transfer. Our email for online giving is mhmgive at gmail.com. That is so simple to remember. Master's Hand Ministry, mhm at, at mhmgive at gmail Dot com. Right when I said it was easy to remember, I messed it up. So let me tell it to you again. mhmgive at gmail.com. And these are all lowercase letters, of course. I want to take an opportunity to thank you for joining us every Sunday, listening to the Word, and sharing it with others, because I do know that there are several of you that pass it along to your friends, and so I appreciate that. For everyone that you pass it to, maybe they pass it to one more. And that way we are gathering a lot of people hearing the Word of God. So I truly appreciate your effort in spreading the Gospel. Thank you. And I thank you in advance for your continued support. And trust that this additional method of uh, e-transfer will make things more convenient for, for tithing for everyone. As we look at the tithing and, and realize over these last two years, it's been amazing. We had a board meeting and, and uh, Peter gave us the financial report and it was stunning. Beautifully delivered uh, in, in the trust of God because we trusted him to see us through those two years and still be able to meet needs for people. And we have been able to do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your giving. Uh, as you give unto uh, Master's Hand Ministry, you are giving unto the Lord. Bless you. So I pray that everyone will have a glorious week ahead and remember, whatever suffering we bear will one day be the glory revealed to us in heaven. Isn't that beautiful? We will see the glory that's being held in heaven for us. 
and the suffering that we have here will no longer be in our thoughts. And while we are suffering here, let us keep our thoughts on the glory that awaits us. I'd like to end with a song today, and it's called Count It All Joy. And it talks a bit, it's written, uh, and it talks a bit about suffering. So, um, I don't have who it was written by. My apologies. Perhaps maybe I can find that out and put it in a note on our website. So it's called Count It All Joy. you say your way isn't quite clear and it gets hard at times to persevere you say your burdens hard well don't ever doubt that God is in control working it out. Count it all joy, this trial you're in. God is just working on you from within. He's letting patience have its perfect work in to make you more like him when it is through. He'll never allow more on you than you can bear. Just run to the throne of grace and cast all your cares. He wants his image formed inside of you. Remember your faith in him will carry you through. Count it all joy, this trial you're in. God is just working on you from within. He's letting patience have its perfect work in you to make you more like him when it is through. So count it all joy, this trial you're in. God is just working on you from within. He's letting patience have its perfect work in you to make you more like him when it is through. Oh, you'll be when it is through. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you today for your message. Thank you today for your promise in your word. And thank you today for your assurance, Father God. Lord, we end our service today giving all praise and glory and honor unto you. For you are so deserving. And Father, we are so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I ask you to join me again next Sunday when we'll have a new message that the Lord is wanting to lay on your heart. So until then, have a glorious week in the Father.